The Tamron 35 to 150mm f2 to f2.8 Nikon Z mount lens. It is awesome. Okay, let's wrap it up. That's all I got to say. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's better the best, fastest lens review I've done in history. Hey. What? Oh, you, you, want, you want me to prove it? Yeah, but it's, and it's, all right. No early lunch for us then. Just a quick shout out to the team at Tamron Australia for sending me out this lens to test and review, but I'm not getting paid to do this review. In fact, this is just a loaner lens. So any sort of findings or opinions I've got of this lens are mine alone. But before I get started, let's go and have a look what you get in the box, as well as its specs. Opening the box, you get your documentation along with the lens, which is in thick, snug foam packaging. You get your front and rear lens caps and lens hood. First impressions, it felt really well built, but it did have a little weight to it. It's an FX or full frame Z mount lens, weighs 1,190 grams, has an 82 millimeter filter thread, minimum focus distance is just 33 centimeters at 35 millimeters and 85 centimeters at 150 millimeters. Maximum aperture is f2 to f2.8 and minimum at f16 to f22. Optical construction, it has 21 elements and 15 groups and a nine blade rounded diaphragm. One thing to note, this lens does not have any image stabilization and instead it relies on the inbuilt stabilization or vibration reduction on the Nikon Z full frame cameras. You'll notice there's a USB-C port towards the rear of the lens. This is where you can update firmware and custom design the operation of the lens to suit your style and needs via the Tamron Lens Utility free software program. I won't go too much into what this program can do in this video, but I will leave you a link to the Tamron Lens Utility in the video description box below. So this Tamron 35 to 150 millimeter lens, it's actually been out for a while. It's available for the Sony E-mount. Now, when this was released, it got some pretty rave reviews for that system. So my question is, what's it like for the Nikon Z-mount? Let's go and give it a shot. So straight away after using this Tamron lens on the Nikon Z7, I can tell you that it works pretty much the same as what my native Z mount lens is. I know a lot of you that probably have clicked on this video, that's probably one of your concerns. You're thinking, okay, it's a Tamron lens. What's it gonna be like on a Nikon camera? And I can tell you and put your minds at ease, it does work just as well as what my Z mount lenses do. And by that, I mean the iDetect autofocus works extremely well. So no third party lens issues there. And the focus between objects is quick, smooth and dead silent. So that's good news for video shooters that need a quiet lens when recording audio near or around the camera. Just another thing too, I might mention is that I love the fact that going from 35 to 150 millimeters, it's just a very quick throw like this. You know, I think Tamron have actually hit a home run when it comes to this lens, because I think one of the reasons why I like it so much is the fact that I don't have to change lenses. That focal length of 35 to 150 millimeters has got me pretty much covered. And yeah, when it comes to changing lenses, particularly out in the field, it's a little pet hate of mine.
If you can't afford both the native 24 to 70 and 70 to 200 f 2.8 s lenses that make up the holy trinity of f 2.8 lenses, then I think this Tamron 35 to 150 mm f 2 to 2.8 lens would make for a happy compromise. Plus, it would save you a heap of weight in your camera bag and you'll save yourself thousands of dollars in the process. You'll also have the added convenience of not having to change those other two lenses constantly, meaning you're less likely to miss those moments where timing is everything. Oh, my goodness. Here's a montage of shots in both stills and video using this lens in conjunction with the Nikon Z7. So my summation when it comes to this Tamron 35 to 150 mm f2 to 2.8 Z mount lens. Well, if you're an event or a wedding photographer, let me tell you something. This is your quintessential lens. I can see photographers using this for things like bands, exhibitions, car shows, even things like comic cons. And it wouldn't matter if you're indoors or outdoors. This lens is absolutely perfect for that. The pros for me when it comes to this lens is its incredible versatility factor. You can use this lens for just so many photographic genres and situations. And I'm talking landscape, travel, sport, nature, astro, low light, street, event, wedding and portrait photography and I've probably left out some there too. I believe it's actually good value for money given its low light capability at such a diverse focal length and it basically mutes the need for changing lenses constantly. Minimum focusing distance is a real bonus at just 33 centimeters at 35 millimeters and you can capture some stunning images with smooth creamy bokeh in the background. I found the images I captured in both stills and video to be very sharp and importantly this lens worked flawlessly in conjunction with my Nikon Z7, so no sort of third-party lens problems encountered there. The cons? Well, I just have a couple of very minor cons. One is the positioning of this third customizable button underneath the lens. There were times when I was resting the camera and lens on my leg and I kept accidentally activating it, or when I was holding the lens underneath, I'd bump it. And initially, I couldn't work out what was going on, so maybe that's just something to be mindful of. The second thing I would have liked to have seen, a little plastic cover over the external USB-C port. It would have just given me that little extra confidence when out shooting in damp conditions, like near a waterfall, or if I was in light rain or snow. Other than that, this lens is just superb. In fact, in the future, I'll be buying my own copy of this lens to team up with my Nikon Z7 and future Z-mount cameras I buy. It'll be great having this lens in my camera bag just for its amazing versatility. Well guys, it's come to the end of the review and I hope you enjoyed the video. By all means, if you've got any questions about this lens, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as best I can. Never stop creating and I'll see you next time.